27, the war is still burning pretty hard. By the way, I can't seem to reform my, my chip in the camera, which means I've just lost those two minutes. It's not a big deal. I have like 11 and a half hours. It's just this weird little thing. I think if I switch it to my other camera, I can. But this one, I like stripped out some of the functionality, apparently, um, that I thought was available on the camera, which apparently it isn't. I, just use the file system to access things. Anyway, uh, Spartans continuing slogging through the mud here. An attack here didn't succeed, but an attack here down in the Cyclades did. I could have brought that fleet over to attack here, but the land units weren't in range, and then I'm worried about getting triangulated somehow, or even just um, in reach of two of those um, Athenian fleets would make things maybe a little bit more dangerous. Um, I'm pretty safe with this one, I'm sure. So I'm actually going towards trying to gain the Cyclades. Right now I'm losing two bucks a turn on navies and I'm losing, uh, well, I think I'm not losing anything on land units. I'm breaking even on land units actually. Uh, let me make sure, yep, Boeotia has not yet fallen. It's the Argolid thing that I haven't been able to retake. Right, and for the Athenians, moving over, trying to take Yubo back, failed. They're losing navies at this point to do it. Um, not having cash and being oversized. They're even now, but... So this fleet actually got reduced even further, but I'm pulling it back. Maybe can transport some land units around. I built some land units here. And I built my fortress there to take Boeotia away. <laughs> So then, you know, we're going to trade Argolid for Boeotia, but whatever. It's, it's ping pong, man. It really is. Right now, it feels like the Spartans have the edge. It feels like they're likely to gain ground here. Uh, they're trying to restore order in their own territories, but this is actual gaining of ground. They're probably not going to gain the Cyclades, but they're going to keep causing problems deeper and deeper to uh, Athenian territory. And they may make it so the Cyclades isn't easy to regain. So it would require too much effort to take uh, to restore order there. So, you know, the fleet may go chasing my fleet. And I, I may have taken away a big four-point uh, area, naval area, for quite some time. Let's managed to retake uh, Thessaly here. If I could not make a mess. Uh, took Chalcedice and Samos away, and did not manage with the Argolid, though. And we still have Boeotia out of commission as well, which, you know, that's a big amount of our points. But we're doing a lot of damage, too, at the same time. Uh, no, it's our Athenian friends, and actually can bring this fleet up, and then leave some ships, and continue to pursue perhaps or something else I don't know <laughs> on the Athenian side of the turn um, they ended up losing a lot of navies because they're having so much of their economy stripped away from them two more six more points of navy taken away they're down to like 23 they're allowed to have and they have no reserves uh, land units they're okay on but not you know able to build much um, or anything really. So what did we do? Well, we gathered our forces together and took Yubo, and then over here, we've got nothing but land units holding this right now, um, which means that's not going to get any bigger. Uh, I don't know what to do with those land units, to tell you the truth, so they might as well just stay there, but we're not able to keep up with, you know, what the uh, Spartans took away from us this turn and next turn and, and this wasn't empty there was a strength point in it which is why we had to keep the whole fleet I thought I could just grab it next turn obviously we're gonna see uh, I'm not sure why this didn't fall I think I should have that erased uh, because that was sitting there during their turn so yeah, they took Argolid back. Probably thought there was troops there. 
pushes on, uh, taking Lesbos away, <laughs> just continuing that series of problems, and uh, moving through the Cyclades. I can't actually take them, but I might be able to take something back there. So that's kind of the, hey, let's make a push in that direction. The problem is I'm leading the Athenian navy, which went and grabbed uh, Cyclades, possibly up in that direction. In which case, we're going to have some trouble, but whatever. Uh, you know, we got to try to expand ourselves as much as possible. Over here are these guys heading in to try to take uh, Boeotia, which is really the only thing that Sparta has ever held that they no longer are getting income from. Uh, on the other hand, Athens has quite a few, I don't know if you can see my notation, but they have quite a few things that are grayed out, which they're not getting uh, an income from. So it feels like Sparta's winning right now. Perhaps of expansion of income rather than retraction, Sparta takes Boeotia back and um, Athens takes Samos back. However, the Spartans are positioning themselves to take Chalcedesi completely. Athens built some more armies here in the hope of staving that off. And they're also in the position to grab Lesbos. So eh, it's, you know, if I can take this, I can prevent them from getting that. But it's really beginning to look like uh, a really bad situation for Athens. And in addition, the Spartan army is ready to grab that extra 10 bucks, which they can take this either land or naval. They have tons of naval points left. No. If they can start building navies at Lesbos or something, that would be huge. But the Athenian navy can slide up and challenge them easily enough. I thought this was the invasion of Attica turn. It's not, so I had to give back some money. I took five of each. Uh, the Spartans positioned themselves in there. It doesn't make much difference. There's nothing really threatening, and they want to grab that cash. But otherwise, uh, they moved on into Amphipolis but failed to take anything, which is kind of a big deal. Now, Athens didn't have enough money to put a unit there, so Amphipolis is going to be stripped from them, but it does mean it's going to be a little harder, maybe. Maybe I want to attack here and take Chalcedia. I don't know. Um, I'll make my mind up when I play the turn. Uh, we took the rest of Lesbos. Athens failed to retake one of the islands, which means, well, one of the cities, which means that we're going to get that production, which is a big four naval production. We can build up to four navies. We easily have the cash for that, uh, which may turn the tide a little bit. Um, that, that may be a big deal. Yeah. If we can crack the Athenian navy, I mean, not really turn the tide, but it may give us the naval advantage, which means then if we can crack the Athenian navy, I think it's more or less over. It's just a matter of time then to get it down to where it's just Attica alone and then begin the siege, which are the rules that prevent you from doing it here. Um, the game's clearly not a real deep simulation. It's got a lot of things that are either abstracted, if you want to be kind to the game, or otherwise. But in terms of kind of a, a design for effect type of thing, it does sort of give you the flavor. Uh, so far, um, it's not, you know, the most appealing way uh, to present it, but it's a tough situation to present. As you can see with the Herman games, uh, Pericles and uh, uh, the uh, uh, Peloponnesian War, he had to go through some very complex hoops to generate the kind of stalemate that they're doing with a special rule here, really. Uh, how much does the rest of it really apply? I don't know. It, it, some of it seems okay. You know? <laughs> Reaches in and steals Amphipolis. Continuing to build up forces here. We did the invasion of Attica this time. And I should put this here. Uh, the Athenians came back and they stripped Lesbos away. That's going to be maybe a problem, but not really. I got to build the boats, and I got plenty of money. So <laughs> I don't know how big a deal it actually is. And meanwhile, I've taken Lemnos away, which, you know, 
is continuing to reduce the Athenian capability to, uh, to collect income. As we're closing on the end of the year, uh, Sparta failed to uh, take him, well, take the important city in Amphipolis. They took another city in Lemnos. They moved back here. They got another army. Uh, these guys building up to try to take uh, Chalcidia. They're pretty sure they can't take it yet. And by moving, they lose the opportunity to build two more strength points. <laughs> um, the Athenian navy moved up into Lemnos, made the attack, and suffered something of a disaster. Now, essentially, uh, they rolled a, a four or whatever. Whatever caused them 25% losses. Actually, I think it was a two over here or something. I don't know. But whatever is the worst result that they could still win with, um, which may be worse than not winning for them, <laughs> because now they're stuck somewhere without a navy. Now they can, you know, pick one up here or something. Uh, and it reduced strength. Now, worse, they're actually on an island. One, two, three, four, five. They can't be reached, though. I can't pick up those land units and hit them with a land naval combined force, which would be disastrous. But I can perhaps beat them uh, in this last turn of the year. Uh, and that, that would just, you know, add to the, uh, the problem because then I'd have to try to gather a fleet down in Attica. I don't think this is possible though. I think I'm gonna be able to continue to survive there. It's very unlikely. If, if the Spartans have the odds, it's probably a 125, so. And the nails are beginning to sink deeper and deeper into Athens' flesh. <laughs> uh, Chalcedon DC fell. It is now a Spartan territory. Amphipolis, the city was destroyed by these guys moving forward. Now I could have gone forward and attacked, but there's a land naval force there that could land on any island that's within range of it. So I can't really afford to challenge for Lemnos. So I'm sailing down this way because over in the Cyclades, we have a new little force moving around. <laughs> That's again a combined land naval force, but it's kind of abandoning the, hey, we need that money. We don't really need money. We got tons of money. Um, remember, it doesn't hurt Athens to have the grain taken, which is a little weird, but uh, it kind of works for the game because it helps provide that stalemate situation. Um, and Athens is at the point where, you know, if they lose these two, they basically have one land point left, enough to keep this one strength point that they have on the board. Of course, they have some additional cash, uh, this naval, they have some additional cash left over uh, from the turn. So, you know, they'll be accumulating some land value, but uh, who knows? Who really knows? And there's, you know, value over here where the Spartans can be getting three buck provinces, which are great because you make two bucks out of them, essentially, of whatever kind you want because they're split. Um, well, you can only get one naval buck out. And, yeah, um, I would almost say that this is not a bad point to say I think we can quit now. <laughs> because I don't see any way that Athens can come out of this. Uh, the time I played before, eh, I don't think we got quite this far. Um, I know that I had feelings like I was going to lose the game, as I think I was Athens, but I don't feel like my opponent felt that way, and quite often I felt more negative about the situation than he did. Well, more negative about my situation than he did about my situation. We maybe both looked at things. Um, but it may just be that Athens has to try something to get the edge. Um, one key might be Corsera. Sicily, obviously, huge, huge payoff if you get it. The Persian territories, I can't touch them. Um, they will eventually cause a problem, and that is a huge problem. 
I would need one hell of a Navy. So that looks like another possible strategy is to try to dominate so hard on the navies and maybe not work so hard on the land side of things that um, the Spartans really can't go to sea and you have a big enough Navy to defeat Persia. The biggest thing that hurt me though is something that I'm not even sure applies, which was countermix. Countermix killed me. The lack of navies for Athens is really, uh, the lack of one point navies is really what hurt me. And that feels bogus, <laughs> you know? Um, if that's what the game swings on, I would say that they're probably, um, it's probably not a reasonable representation of anything reason. There's probably no reasonable excuse for that, um, that they'd have to, you know, not garrison with navies. Knowing it, well, it means that maybe you can't go for the pure naval strategy that I'm thinking, that I was thinking of, and maybe you need to garrison your areas with the ground, with the actual uh, land units so that you don't get, um, you don't get hit by that uh, problem of the navies. And I remember running into that as well, where I felt like that was going to be my limiting force, perhaps. It was so long ago, I can't be sure. Maybe I'm just making shit up. Um, I'll keep going at least another year uh, to see if the tide can swing. But I don't see how it can. Again, right now I'm not in a position to go after Sicily, nor clearly after Persia. I don't feel like I can go on the offensive against the Spartans. I don't feel like I have the power to do so. Maybe I'll get really lucky on the combat chart, but the combat chart doesn't, in a close situation, can make a difference. Um, but it's not like most war games where the combat has enough variability in it that you can always hope, oh, I'll destroy a big pile of his forces on a two to one attack with the worst possible roll or a three to one or whatever, and then I'll be able to turn around. And the other thing that's missing, which I really feel the lack, is event cards. I think event cards would be very, very important in this uh, in a lot of ways. And I kind of feel like this particular scenario got kind of short shift because, um, you know, they came up with the event cards for the other thing where they didn't bother to come up with victory conditions that make sense. <laughs> Which you'd think is kind of a cynical no, um, and then uh, and this one really would shine from it. You're not seeing revolts among the Athenian allies or anything like that. That has to all be kind of thought of as well. The Spartan navy is somehow being those revolts, and certainly it could facilitate them. But it's kind of hard to uh, it's kind of hard to justify that in the same way. And that's that's where the Herman games, and I presume the Clash of Arms uh, design, do a better job of, of uh, at least representing something that was happening as opposed to, uh, you know, again, this is what you get when you do design for effect, right? <laughs> All right. So well, it looks like uh, the fall of Athens is definitely coming. Um, I can't build much more. I really can't. My production is too low. Um, I can afford a couple more land units, three more land units over the course of time, and I've got the cash to buy them. And I can afford one more naval unit that I have. And I'm just not seeing an easy way to deal with anything. Um, the entire Spartan force that was up here is now on an island here and it's threatening these. It's too big for me to cope with. I can try to pick off stuff around the edges, uh, but at this point, Sparta has a bigger navy than Athens does. And that's kind of the doom situation. When one becomes dominant in the other's major field, there's just nothing you can do. Um, uh, the only thing I could see is you know, maybe pick off this smaller Spartan force because Sparta ran and grabbed you bow. Um, but I don't have the forces immediately available 
And what I'm going to have to hope, I guess, is to be I, I, trimming their land units isn't going to do a damn bit of good because they have all this excess money. They'll just build the army, go in and knock me out. And then they have, you know, a problem. The one thing that is hurting Sparta, or might hurt them, is a lack of leadership. All their leaders are up here in the north. And I'll try to exploit that, but I can't see much coming of it. Successes this next turn. Uh, Sparta fails to take the last piece of Lemnos. Never then they're going to go back and grab Lesbos and start yeah, grabbing the Hellespont region, which over in Pericles ends the game, essentially, if you take that away from the Athenians. And, you know, being in the position able to do that pretty much shows that you're winning this game as well. However, for different reasons. Here it's the physical might. There it could just be, you know, the surprise attack, essentially, on a really important location. And then the opponent has, they, this uh, Athenians would have one turn to get it back. The reasoning is different. Uh, there, it's the grain supply. You have to be able to get the grain supply from one of the key locations, which includes Sicily. It includes uh, the coast of Persia. Here, it's simply, uh, I'm going to surrender because I can't really keep fighting <laughs> any longer. <laughs> um, however, I'm not, you know, Athens basically fought to the bitter end. I, I'm not sure I'm going to go that far, but I started this video, so I might as well go a little further. But the Athenians tried to take you bow back. They failed at that, and now you can see Skeros is going to fall next. Um, it's just this never-ending, you know, you can maintain the stasis as long as you have some force. But things kind of broke in Sparta's favor heavily, and I'm not sure if some of that was, you know, how much of that was strategy, how much of that was the way the game's designed that Sparta has a bit of an edge in that direction, or how much of it, you know, how much of it might be a huge error, which you put down a strategy or whatever, on Athens' side, or it could just be Sparta won a few die rolls in a row that were kind of lucky rolls, and it could be a nice little string of lucky rolls kind of hands you a big advantage, and it could be some mix of those things. So I'm not sure. I do know that Sparta got a few lucky rolls at important points. That kind of turned the tide up here, for example. Um, and in terms of them running the navies, uh, they sort of got some really, really good, uh, good chances there. And that's one thing. The combat system, you know, feels like, well, I'm bigger, I will win. Yeah, eventually. But speed is of some importance in this because it's gathering up uh, locations, stealing them from the opponent, whatever that's of value. And of course, there's also a fair amount of, oh, look, they've got open things available, and Sparta was able to grab a lot of those open things, too. Uh, there were other times where mm, maybe things didn't look as good for Sparta, like when their navy was gone, and Athens had kind of free reign over here. I had thoughts that maybe Athens could do something with that, but nah, the Spartan navy could come back. They had so much cash backed up. Um, I'm trying to think about maybe attacks down here near the Isthmus, whatever, because taking advantage of the fact that Sparta doesn't have any leadership down there. But I don't have all that much capacity to build troops. Uh, I have enough to take a province, you know, <laughs> or whatever. I don't have, well, to take a province away easily. I don't really have a clear amount that allows me to start an offensive over here. And if that started, Sparta could then probably arrange to um, try to put out that fire. The big thing they need is the leader. They've got the money to build the army, or the navy for that matter, but, well, it's only a 10-point navy, that's, and they can't afford it. They're paying two a turn on their navy right now. If they got Lemnos, though, they would start making money on their navy again. Uh, and likewise, if they took some of these other areas. Uh, of course, if they got Lemnos, they might build more navy because <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that's been kind of my pattern is, ooh, I've got shipbuilding capability. I better build some ships. 
because Athens can, is going to be capable of challenging me on the sea, and eventually attrition is going to be a problem. All right, next turn, uh, both sides gaining a little bit. Over here, the Spartans gained Lemnus. I don't know what to do here, but they did take Skeros away from the Athenians. The Athenians got you bow back. They ought to be moving them somewhere. I just don't know what to do with them. I was actually considering disbanding them, but I have so much troop money that I don't really want to do that. However, marching them up there seems tremendously expensive to just gain more ground power that I already have, so I guess they're okay where they are. Continues to increase their domination with Skiros and Lesbos both coming back under their economic control. And be a little careful. We get the invasion of Attica coming up. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it because all my leaders are up here. So we're not going to get the bonus this time. We have, you know, not a big enough army, but it would be big enough with the build. Just poised, ready to go in, but no leadership. <laughs> it's not a big deal. I don't need the money. Uh, and for the Athenians, well, they did a little shift to make this a little stronger coming up this way. Hoping to put a little pressure, but one, two, three. Eh, we might see the Spartans hitting them here. They're actually on land and in not a great position. Um, and we have the capacity to build three more ships here. So we might just be knocking them out here. On the other hand, who knows? <laughs> the combat chart is not... Um, not likely to produce, it, it doesn't tend to produce results, is the big problem. Uh, that is almost certainly it. I'll finish the turn and then think about whether or not I want to finish the year even. Um, a 125 here, and boom, I killed it. Chersonese is gone. The production is so minuscule. <laughs> uh, locations where I can build stuff getting less and less. I don't have leaders either. For what that's worth but basically the only place i can build stuff that's of any use is in attica itself and very quickly the spartans can sail down and uh, um, quite possibly gain control of Ebo, <laughs> cyclades while kind of maintaining something of uh, uh, a blockade on uh, on the Athenian position, and meanwhile, these guys are going to come up here and take the last couple Athenian locations over here, so there's almost nothing left uh, for Athens, which means we would go to the siege rules, which I don't remember what the hell they are. Um, might be worth looking at if I can find them. Besiege for three turns with five land and five sea points. That's pretty trivial. It really is. Um, and as they say, in practice, the losing player will realize defeat is inevitable long before a siege is undertaken and will surrender. And I think that's where we are. Um, I still have the Athenian turn to take, but they have so little to do, um, really. They might you know, try to break out and grab the Cyclades, try to make something happen, but I just don't see it. Athens is trying to rise, but, uh, yeah. Uh, over here, Sparta takes Chesonesis away, and, you know, we're getting into uh, the Golden Horn and all that. Uh, and uh, grabs a couple of spaces on your bow. Well, one, actually. This one, they failed their attack. But then the Athenians, like I said, were coming back. Now, here, I launched. Hey, I can build fleets up here. So... You know, I grabbed a city and took Yubo away. But the Athenians were able to complete their move down here and take out the one Spartan uh, bastion in the Cyclades, which means we're going to get that back. So we didn't lose any income. In the, uh, well, actually, we gained income, but we're going to lose this probably. And we also built another navy. Remember, we're limited to only building seven ships per turn, which you know, prevented us from using the cash reserve we had. We don't have it anymore, and probably going to lose ships very shortly. Uh, but they were hoping to take uh, Boish, uh, no, Argolid away from the Spartans. That means nothing to the Spartans, essentially. They have so many reserves. 
both naval and land, but especially land. This is a 50. Uh, <laughs> there's really nothing that can be done. But, you know, I don't really necessarily know what the cash uh, holdings are. Um, so, on to another turn. Bo Sparta has continued on. They built up their forces in the Archelid so that it can't be taken from them easily. Uh, this isn't going to be sufficient to knock it out. Which means I could go and build a fort, which... If I, I, I could actually just build it right there, I think. I don't think I have to build it in a place without a town, but... Um, over here, Spartans succeeded in taking the main city in Ubo. Uh, everything but one is gone, and they're in position to move into the Cyclades. Over here, we grab this location. That puts Athens in a dangerous place. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, no, but in a worse place than I thought. Uh, they only have one. No. Yeah, they only are producing one land unit now uh, at a time. Now, they have enough money to keep their land units alive, so that's not a huge issue. But uh, I thought this was naval because that would make sense. Uh, but no, I have a bank of land units. So I thought they were going to have to make a choice between disintegrating this or this. And if they get rid of the Cretans, they lose points. If they get rid of this, they make it very easy for Sparta to take it. But... It's not the case. Uh, I actually have enough to pay for uh, my units. As long as I throw this in. Athenian Navy gathers at sea. Uh, almost daring the Spartans to come at them. One, two, three, four, five. The Spartans can get both their forces there. They won't have any of their land units, but it might be worth it just to take a shot at wiping them out. Uh, this is really the last turn. I'm not going to play out another. I'm not going to play out another year. Spart uh, Athens is definitely falling. It's just a matter of. I have to go through the tedium of stripping these things away. I can't see any possibility of them coming back. But you know, I'll play out the year for shits and giggles, basically. And because Athens has basically agreed to surrender, we're going to fight out that one last climactic battle just for kicks. The main reason I think I like to play is I love the. Uh, main mechanism of this game, which seems to be counting. <laughs> it really does, because, um, yes, there's a little bit of combat, there's a little bit of other stuff, but for the most part, it's really all about... Uh, it, it, I hate counting normally, but here it, it hasn't gotten too hard. It's like I have these sheets, I have my little money, I can transfer that back and forth, and I've gotten kind of happy about it. It was kind of annoying me earlier on in the game. So, let's see what we got here. We got 12 Athenian ships. Yep, Sparta's attacking. 16, 17, 18. That sounds like 150. So, five or six, I destroy the Athenian navy. And that would be a good way to end things. I don't know what to do otherwise. I think I just quit anyway, but we don't get that. But there really is no point in continuing on. Um, there's nothing that Athens can do to give themselves a real chance. All they're doing now is trying to prolong the misery. And, eh, you know, I'm having fun with it, but I got plenty of other games to play. And this one has run its course, I fear. Um, I guess the biggest problem that I have, or the biggest issue that I have, I don't know if it's a problem, The biggest concern, yeah, let's call it that, is that I'm not sure whether or not the game is slightly unbalanced. The one way or the other, but I'm assuming in favor of Sparta here. Uh, because it felt like Sparta got off to a great jump, and it's hard for Athens to match the kind of expansion that Sparta got to in this. Or if it's a matter that it's actually a fairly close balanced game but the combat chart with its 100% losses on one side a la Imperium Romanum and very fitting for the ancient world honestly that part of it um, is dramatic enough in terms of the variance that it provides even though it doesn't seem like it does, you know you're going to win the battle or not. You know, either nothing's going to happen or you're going to completely defeat the enemy. Um, but the effects of a bottleneck holding out with a no effects for longer than expected or whatever, or 
being taken and thus being able to expand into other areas. That can be quite large in the game. Another thing that can be quite large is if you get that 25% hit on your force, because you might be attacking some crappy little four point force here, you know, and take 25% of, you know, I don't know, a 16 strength force. So you lose four strength points. Well, that may make you exposed to uh, a slightly larger force and it may change the balance of power in the in the area significantly enough that one side gains initiative off of it where the other didn't. It felt to me like Sparta got off to a good jump. Athens never really was ahead, but then Sparta got a series of good rolls that turned it from, and maybe some better play, but they got a series of good rolls that turned it from being that kind of stalemate into something different. Um, eh, I would say we went further than I did in my only opposed play of this that went any significant amount of time. And I don't remember any other plays. Nothing else really stuck in my mind. I had the feeling that I fiddled around with the pieces with this, but decided that eh, this is too simple a game for my taste or whatever. Well, I'm not so sure about that anymore. Uh, playing it opposed convinced me of something neat about it, which was the way the balance is maintained. And uh, I would still be willing to play this again at least a couple more times, which is not bad, you know, for what it is, really. You know, I'm probably not going to have the amount of plays I'd be willing to put into it in the rest of my life, unless I find somebody who is really enthralled by, you know, the questions and puzzles that this uh, presents.